Welcome to the Temporal Waves for January 2024. My name is Molly. I'm going to guide you through the collective cosmic weather report for the month ahead. Any important updates, the important themes for the month, the days of intensity and harmony on a general level. Of course, look at personal transits to understand the specific cycle of life you are traversing, the new windows of opportunity opening for you in January and beyond. If you need help with this, I have been doing consulting astrology for almost a decade. It is one of my greatest passions in life to share this wisdom, and it's incredibly practical as far out as it may seem. So reach out to me if you're interested in that. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share some op exciting educational opportunities that I will have soon if you want to study and learn some of these techniques and how to apply astrology in a really practical way to help you understand where to live and how to navigate relationships. Okay, January 2024. Mercury goes direct on January 1st, but before you get too excited... I know. Keep in mind, there's a post shadow. What's the post shadow? Is that real? Well, there's pre and post. And sometimes you think it's over, but like there's a little bit still left. Like you think you filtered everything out, but there, like the water is still a little cloudy. It's kind of like that. Still a great time in January to tie up any loose ends. But uh, yeah, it's kind of like keep in mind that things might not feel full on linear back to schedule until the 20th. Now, speaking of the end of January, Uranus wakes up on the 26th. It leaves its retrograde position that had been in really most of 2023, at least consistently from August 2023 till now. So at the end of January, this sleeping giant this planet that represents breakthroughs, innovations, change and shifts, disruptions, surprises, waking up, what does that mean? What does that have in store for you? Well, it kind of depends. Waking up at 19 degrees of Taurus. So if you have any personal luminaries, planets or angles around 19 degrees of Taurus you, in the earth signs, you will feel a positive shift from this because Uranus is going to be creating a trine to these planets. And so you're getting this extra boost, this extra encouragement to broaden your perspective, to change it up, to shift it up. And maybe you can do that in a more easeful way than if, say, you have your moon or your ascendant or your sun near 19 degrees of the fixed signs. What are those signs? That would be Taurus. Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius. So if you have planets around 19 degrees of those signs, this wake up, shake up of Uranus might be more uncomfortable. But luckily, Jupiter's trailing not too far behind Uranus. So as my friend says, when you feel the rug being pulled out from under you, hang on because it's going to be a magic carpet ride. It's all about your perspective, right? And so these Uranian changes, these shifts that the collective is really going to be feeling at the end of January can be a positive broadening of a perspective where the things that feel uncomfortable can actually bring us into new opportunities that benefit us. All right, so... This is the calendar of key dates. You can screenshot this if you want. I don't think I need to read it out to you like your little kid, but if you want that, comment below. Um, like I said, Mercury Station is direct on the 1st. On the 11th, we have the new moon in Capricorn. According to the Tropical Zodiac, it will be Purva Ashada Nakshatra if you like to follow the sidereal or understand the Vedic wisdom. So what is this nakshatra auspicious for? Well, this new moon is very mystical in its connection to Neptune and it's squaring the nodes. So it has a bit of a faded spiritual quality to it. Purva Ashada is all about new beginnings, exploring in nature, adventuring, doing anything that requires bravery. So keep that in mind on January 11th. On the 13th, Mercury enters Capricorn, according to the tropical zodiac, a much more grounded place for the planet of communication. And I'm a little biased because I have Mercury and Capricorn. <laughs> January 20th, 
Pluto enters Aquarius. This is all the rage in Western astrology. Why? Because it's leaving Capricorn and it will only return for like a brief stint in autumn, fall of 2024. But for the most part, it's cleaning the slate. And for those who have had Pluto like a wrecking ball going over their Capricorn stellium, yeah, maybe it's a sigh of relief for you. But, uh, you know, if you have your North Node in Aquarius, Pluto's coming for you. And Pluto wants you to get rid of shit, clean up shop, and transform and emerge from a chrysalis. Pluto entering Aquarius, everyone's saying this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. Why? Because Pluto is this very collective planet out there and it has a lot to do with uh, collective transformation in aquarius this is in the digital sphere this is in the networks the communities the communications and innovations things like alien talk that we've been getting little like breadcrumbs of in 2023 who knows what crazy shit's going to happen at the end of January in terms of the sci-fi level news headlines. On January 23rd, Venus enters Capricorn. January 25th, we've got the full moon in Tropical Leo or Pushya Nakshatra in the Vedic system. And Pushya, while 25th full moon is a definite day of intensity that I will go over on my day of intensity slide, um, what you can do is channel it into devotion and chanting and prayer. It's a really good day for that. And then on the 26th, Uranus busts loose of its retrograde shackles and really shifts things up for some people, many people. <laughs> Again, look at the house, Jupiter and Uranus are transiting in your chart and aspects it's making. If you need help, reach out. All right, what are the days of intensity for January 2024? So we have Moon square Pluto, Venus square Saturn on the third. This could be not a great relational day with the emotions riding high and um, the difficulty between Venus and Saturn. On the 14th, we've got the moon with Neptune and Saturn. So it's like confusion where you can make bad choices. <laughs> moon is squaring Venus and AKA not a good day to maybe get your beautification on. The sun will be conjunct Pluto and Mercury's conjunct Mars. Mercury conjunct Mars is an aspect we will be having most of the month. And it's not all intense in a negative way. Mercury conjunct Mars definitely brings some impulsivity, but it also brings a lot of taking action on your ideas, right? Not just having them live in your head, but deciding to actually implement them, right? With with Mars's stamina, especially exalted in Capricorn. On the 15th, so yeah, this day, the 14th, I just want to emphasize, it's just, uh, it's not really a good day. I was looking at the nakshatra for this day. It's not good for um, borrowing money or anything that requires a lot of like measuredness and precision. Um, so keep that in mind. Business dealing is probably not great on that day either. On the 15th, we got the moon conjunct Neptune, the moon squaring Mars and Saturn, so moon square Mars and Saturn can be a lot of disruptions, things being halted or obstacles getting in the way and confusion around that. On the 17th, the moon squares Pluto and Mercury is exactly conjunct Mars on the 17th. I don't know why I had to emphasize that so excitedly. Maybe it's because this is like, I just filmed this transit report <laughs> and I had to redo it. Thank you, Mercury Retrograde. So yeah, I'm a little burnt out. I also have uh, Mars conjoining my natal Uranus and Uranus within a conjunction of my natal Mars. So if you're curious about those transit at all, call me because I have a lot to share. 
on the 17th, the moon is squaring Pluto. And Mercury's, I just talked about that one. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, on the 25th, we've got the full moon in Pushya, Nakshatra, conjunct Pluto. It's intense. It's so whatever the full moon is with, it's like illuminating that planet even more, intensifying that planet's energy, and it's squaring Jupiter. What will the 25th be great for? Prayer, chant, worship, any sort of spiritual devotional practice or anything that involves education and learning something new. It's a great way to channel the energy of the full moon. What are the days of harmony? On the 7th of January, the moon in Vishaka conjoins Venus. Lovely aspect in its own, but in the nakshatra Vishaka, it's amazing for beautifying yourself, getting all dolled up, decorating a space, or hosting a party. I believe Vishaka is also good for warfare. So I know they seem like very polarizing, <laughs> different types of activities, but um, there is a like uh, sassiness, I guess, to this nakshatra. Also, Mars is training Jupiter, so there could be a little overdoing it, overindulgence, but in a fun way. And Mars is sextiling Saturn. Again, would be a good day for a social gathering uh, or using any of your kind of persuasive act, uh, persuasive skills. On the 11th, the new moon, training Uranus and sextiling Neptune, a very mystical new moon in Pravashada. Really good day for paying off debts. What a great way to clean the slate for a new lunar cycle. That nakshatra is great for paying off debts. It's also very auspicious for being brave and courageous and um, going for things. So dream big. On January 18th, the moon conjuncts Jupiter and trines Mercury and Mars and sextiles Saturn, an excellent moon, not just because of these aspects, because of the nakshatra it's in, for business dealings for finishing a deal, for completing a sale, anything like that. Um, great day for it. On the 19th, the moon is conjunct Uranus, trining Mars in Kritika. Great, great ritual, fire ritual, fire worship kind of nakshatra, purifying very purifying nakshatra, very fierce nakshatra. Venus sextiles Saturn this day, and the sun conjoins Pluto exact on this day. It will be interesting. I mean, Ur Mars Uranus trine is, is pretty in exciting. <laughs> and with the moon there illuminating that action uh, of Uranian action, um, this could be a day where you have a lot of energy um, and it'll be interesting to see what happens on the 19th in the collective sphere with that sun Pluto conjunction on the 27th Mercury conjoins Mars exact excuse the typo unfortunately this has not been the smoothest transit report thanks Mercury retrograde so Mercury conjoins Mars this in its positive manifestation most elevated side is like bringing your plans into action and also being quite persuasive with your speech, right? Give It could give a little impulsivity to your, to your ideas. It could be this um, really activating kind of conjunction. Um, it's like the planet of war meets the planet of, of thoughts, communication, and strategy. So yeah, what else would that be good for? Debates. If you're in sales, with this day, that could be a good sales day, Venus sextiling Saturn in addition to that. So the 27th, this is also a good day for if you had like an interview, like a job interview, or you need to make a nice presentation in front of someone or uh, do any sort of a dealing, another good day for that. So this brings me to my conclusion for January 2024. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end. I just want to give a brief discussion of what my class offerings are going to be. And if you're interested, please comment below on the video so I can gauge how many people the size of the class would be. So 
two offerings that are in the works. One is a class on astrocartography and relocational astrology. Have you ever had to move for a job um, or have you considered a big, far distant move, but you want to know how this could influence your life, shape your life? Well, my friend, I've lived in many places and thank you to my Saggy sun and, and other Saggy planets that I have lived along different astrocartography lines. I've done a lot of relocated charts for myself and I've learned a lot as well as doing it for other people. So the astro map that you see with relocational astrology is really showing you where planets fall in the angles of your relocated chart, but there's more to it than just those angles, right? You Your chart shifts depending on where you move to. Now, you still have your natal chart as your essence and your natal promise, but where you live can shape things. For instance, I've recently been living in a place where it's great for resources and money, but my my Mars actually falls into my seventh house, which um, has been really interesting for my relational kind of experiences here. And I'm not just talking like romantic, just interpersonal experiences with people where I have experienced some more martial kind of energies off of people. So it's something to keep in mind. Say you've been experiencing blockages in your career. Of course, you know, there could be transits that are responsible for this too, but there are places you can visit or apply to jobs for or try to live that will boost your career area, a place where Venus or your sun falls into the 10th house of your chart. And this is the beauty of relocational astrology. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, because learning this skill is great because you know you could come to me with a million locations, but ultimately don't you want to learn how to do it yourself? So when you're planning travel, when you're planning moves, you can empower yourself with this wisdom. I'm also going to be teaching a class on astrology for thriving relationships. And it might sound corny, but... Um, it's important, you know. Have you noticed certain types of relational themes come into your life? Um, you're in certain dynamics and relationship over and over again with the new person. A lot of this is hidden in your natal chart. So this class is going to talk about your relationship style, the types of relationships you're drawn to, the relationships you need, ideally, and how to interpret synastry and composite charts. So how to understand the nature of the dynamics of your connections with either your your business partners or your husband or wife. So it'll be a really empowering workshop as well. If you're interested in either one of these, comment below. Let me know which one. And thank you for liking the video, subscribing, and sharing with a friend. I appreciate you all very much.